Thank you, Senator Hagan. Senator Wicker. Thank you very much. Secretary Panetta, uh, congratulations on a, a very interesting and distinguished career. I'm honored to have served with you in the House of Representatives and to have been your colleague, and I wish you the best in your future endeavors. Uh, having said that, uh, um, <laughs> um, you, you were very forceful today in talking uh, about sequestration. I, I heard you uh, on the media yesterday uh, making a very forceful statement about uh, how irresponsible uh, it would be not to fix this before it goes into effect. Uh, let, let me just suggest this. Uh, our colleagues at the other end of the building in the House of Representatives came forward with a bill. They put it in bill language. They had it scored. They passed a rule. They voted on it and sent it to us. It, it, agree with it or not, they came up with a specific answer to it, and there's been no answer uh, back from the Senate side. Uh, the president made a pronouncement about it a few days ago. It, you know, Mr. Secretary, you can't score a speech. You can't score general concepts. Uh, when you see the president, tell him we, we'd be happy to hear his specific views about how those revenues should come in to fix this problem because, frankly, uh, people uh, from my side of the aisle have been calling on the president for specific uh, suggestions, specific proposals that you can score, that you can put in bill language, and we haven't had that for, uh, for over a year. Um, so, um, if you see the president, please make that suggestion to him. Now, uh, General, let me ask you this. Um, I don't see where the intelligence gap is that you mentioned in response to Senator Chambliss's question. He asked if this was an intelligence failure. And, uh, and you said, no, it's an intelligence gap. A and then uh, in fleshing out the testimony, it seems that you knew everything you needed to know. Uh, the the uh, militia fire onto the compound, the IED attack on the UN, the uh, attack on the Red Cross, the abduction of Red Cross workers, the Red Cross deciding then to pull out of Benghazi. Same thing with the United Kingdom, uh, an RPG attack on them. The UK got the message and pulled out. And yet we didn't take the same message, apparently. We didn't make the same uh, decisions, at, at least, from the attacks on the United States and United States interests. Um, are you are you suggesting that there was something else that you needed to know from intelligence sources? Or are you suggesting in the alternative that, that really the only thing missing was a request from the State Department? You got it uh, in Yemen and you acted on it. You didn't get that request from the State Department uh, officially on Benghazi, so you didn't uh, uh, make uh, more arrangements for security there. Would you clear that up for yeah, us? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the opportunity, Senator. The, first of all, what I did know is what I was told in General Ham's weekly reports, which reflected uh, a deteriorating security syst uh, situation in eastern Libya. Let me interject there. Sure. Did, did those come up through the military personnel on the country teams? No, these are reports directly from the combatant commander to the Secretary of Defense. And where did the combatant, compa combatant commander get his information? Well, he's in constant touch uh, with those deployed throughout the region, defense attaches, and in some cases... Defense attache would be a member of the country team? Sure. Okay, yeah. well, then, then proceed ahead. Okay. So, I was made aware that a cable expressing that concern had been sent. I didn't read the cable myself. I'm reflecting what I knew from General Ham. Furthermore, I don't know whether the cable on the 16th of August resulted any requests from the embassy team in Tripoli to the State Department. All I can tell you is we didn't get a request in DOD. So I'm not suggesting that big state got it and didn't do anything with it. I, I don't know what I think the internal deliberations in Tripoli were still ongoing. What I can tell you with great confidence is we didn't get any requests for additional security. Did you know that the Red Cross had been attacked, that Red Cross workers had been abducted, and that the Red Cross subsequently suspended their Benghazi operation? Did you know that? I did. 
You did, okay. And did you know that the, Uni that the United Kingdom uh, had undergone an attack and that they had decided to close their mission in Benghazi? I did. And, and, did, you, and did you then know about the attack on American interests? Through the course of the summer? Through, through, through General Ham, you, you knew about the attacks on the United States. General Ham was very good about reporting the deteriorating security situation in Libya. And you did not feel that you, as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, were in a, a position based on that to make a decision to send in extra uh, security for those American interests there? Well, two, I'd like to answer that in two ways. Number one, this deteriorating situation in Libya wasn't unique. It was in the context, I know that some will suggest it was the worst thing going on. It was among the worst things going on. So this, in context, there, the threat streams in Libya were equaled elsewhere with equally uh, significant and threatening uh, intelligence. Secondly, um, that's not what we do. We, we don't impose resources into a country without the permission at the request of the host nation or uh, the country team in a in a country do you get military resources close by and ready to respond or must you wait for a state department request to do that also we adjust alert postures according to intelligence where we think the threat is highest in retrospect do you wish you had adjusted your alert posture in retrospect, looking backwards in With hindsight. With 2020 hindsight. Sure. And what would you have done? Well, first of all. Would, would you put the, have put them in Crete? Would you have put them no, look, in Look, if uh, they're Libya? not, the, given the kind of attack that occurred, if they weren't in the immediate vicinity, they would not have been able to affect the outcome. A, as we've discussed previously, this has to be some combination of early decisions. Uh, Secretary Panetta, um, lessons learned. Um, it seems that um, two factors that allowed this situation to, from, to go from bad to worse were the very same ones that allowed the first 9-11 attacks to succeed. Number one, the lack of effective intelligence sharing. I think enough Americans knew what they needed to know to know this was, this was really, really bad. And secondly, stovepiped communications between organizations that are supposed to be working together on these sorts of things toward common goals. So 11 years after 9-11, uh, my final question to you, do you believe we're any closer to breaking down these institutional barriers? And um, what steps has DOD taken in this regard in response to the Benghazi incident? Uh, for, first of all, I mean, I, I, I do believe, uh, you know, again, based on my experience, uh, at the uh, CIA and involved with intelligence issues there, that the intelligence community uh, is working uh, much better uh, in terms of sharing information, working together, uh, developing the teams necessary to uh, be able to uh, gather intelligence, uh, sharing that intelligence between the entire community. They're, they're much better uh, at doing that and much more effective. Um, I think the, the, pro problem. the problem remains that uh, it is, it is the gaps on, in, on intelligence resources that are out there that no matter how good your sharing is concerned, if you don't have the information from a resource out there, uh, there, there, there there's going to be a gap and uh, you're going to have the problems that we saw happen here. We've got to be able to fill those gaps. We've got to be able to get better human intelligence, better SIGINT intelligence into those areas that we don't have uh, good information on. That's number one. Number two, uh, we have got to, uh, in response to this, what we have done is to make sure that we deploy those fast teams that are out there. We've located them in key areas. We've reduced their response time. We now have airlift associated with them. I mean, the fact is some of these fast teams did not have airlift. Airlift we would have had to deliver from other areas. We now have airlift that uh, is associated with those teams. So we have taken a number of steps to try to improve our ability to respond. When did you take that last step on airlift? When, when did you impose that last? We did that early on. It's been a, a, a soon after <laughs> what happened. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Wicker. Senator McCaskill. 